Hello everyone this is part 17 of what if Naruto was abused and leaves Kanoa, and I hope you guys enjoy this video and to like, to subscribe, and check out the playlist, to see more comment down below, now let's start the, intro. The As hard as finding the village itself was the actual gate proved no challenge to find now that Naruto knew where he was looking. The gate guards, usually dull and inattentive to their duty except during important occasions, gave him a curious once over, especially fixating on his headband and the girl on his back. He made a move to place Fu on the ground but the girl was having none of it, she just clung to his back harder like a tick. Uh Fu, we're here. You can get off now. She just laughed slightly in his ear, a sound that Naruto had come to enjoy hearing ever since he had rescued her. What if I don't want to get off? Naruto gained a cheeky grin as he craned his neck to try and look at Fu who just moved back so he couldn't see her small blush. She usually wasn't this bold about anything. It wasn't productive in the village where subtlety and deceit got her food and clothing. I'm not a free taxi service you know. Fu just nodded her head in disagreement of him furiously. Yes you are, that's part of being a big brother. Both Jinchuriki froze, Naruto because he was so shocked and Fu because she hadn't meant to say that out loud. Naruto carefully set Fu down, which she allowed him to do without protest, and looked down to her with an enormous smile. Fu could barely comprehend what was happening before she found warm, strong arms envelop her thin shoulders in a brotherly hug. I'm glad I found you Imuoto. A small tear trickled down her cheek at hearing those words and she dived back into the hug to wipe them off on Naruto's chest. Not as much as I'm happy you saved me Onisen. Naruto's smile grew before he swiveled and motioned for her to once again jump on his back, to which she did with enthusiasm. Um identification please. Naruto had almost forgotten the two were standing outside of the gates to a major hidden village. Currently the male gate guard didn't know what to make of the scene he had just witnessed while the female member looked ready to shed a tear at the emotional display. The man was rather large, impressively so, with muscles rippling along his body. Naruto guessed when it came down to it his chakra enhanced strength would match up but he couldn't rule out the possibility the man could do something similar. The woman was more lithe but with the definite air of somebody at least used to getting in and out of conflicts. Both of them were dark darker than Naruto had ever seen anybody before, even Fu. He had been told that many people from Kumo and Iwa had a brown complexion but he wasn't sure what that meant until now. However both were now staring firmly at him and the passenger on his back who peeped her head up over his right shoulder like a parrot. Uh what do you mean identification? I'm Naruto Uzumaki. The gate guards looked exasperated and Naruto sighed thinking this was probably a regular occurrence with outsider visitors. Everybody in Lightning Country must have identification cards to help prevent trespassing into certain areas. Naruto rubbed his head sheepishly, he didn't know about that, nor had he been warned. In any case he certainly wouldn't have had identification for Fu and she didn't even know her last name. Um, couldn't somebody just steal the identification card and henge into the person? The gate guards just narrowed their eyes wondering why an outsider with a strange headband was questioning their security measures. Um anyway I don't have anything like that. I'm from Suna with a message from the Kazekage for the Rakage. Again the gate guards were suspicious but he quickly whipped out the scroll and showed him the Kazekage's seal. Okay, but during your time in the village, unless allowed by the Rakage, you must have an escort with you at all times. Naruto raised an eyebrow, as far as he knew the other hidden villages were nowhere near this tight when it came to security, it would slow many things down. Naruto didn't have that much of a problem with it anyway he wasn't a spy so he had nothing to hide. He nodded and shrugged and the male gate guard went to find an available Junin to escort him. So you call each other siblings but from the looks of you, you can't possibly be related. It was the female who had spoken, usually she wouldn't have pried into private affairs but they had genuinely piqued her interest. Naruto wasn't sure what to say. Technically I kidnapped her from a hidden village because they were mistreating her, oh and also she's a Jinchuriki like me somehow didn't seem to cut it. Yeah, she never had that many people to trust before I came along I guess. The woman just smiled kindly and thankfully stopped prying any further as she caught Fu's uncomfortable look. They waited around for a bit with both Naruto and Fu getting highly bored. Fu began to hum to herself which Naruto smiled at and didn't make an attempt to stop. 
The tune was familiar to him yet he didn't remember hearing anything like it recently. He internally shrugged and dropped it just before the gate guard came back with the guide. She was definitely a Junin. There was that aura of accomplishment and confidence in her abilities that came with the position. Other than that Naruto would have said she was Chunin from her age. She couldn't have been more than 19 with flowing sandy blonde hair that would have cascaded down her back except for the bandages that kept it in a waist-length pigtail. She was slim in build but she looked graceful and agile like a kunoiki should. She wore a tight-fitting shirt that was black across the shoulders and arms but a light purple from her chest down. Fingerless gloves adorned both her hands while odd beads wrapped around her left forearm. Her pants were standard shinobi in black with a small purple cloud decal over her left ankle. They cut off just above the ankles and below that her legs were bound with tape and she had the standard issue black sandals. Naruto thought it was a strange look but he couldn't argue with it if the girl was successful enough to earn full junin so young. Hi, I'm Naruto Uzumaki. The girl just stared at him disinterestedly. Naruto suddenly felt something when he was near her like an innate familiarity. He shrugged it off as just a weird feeling or maybe something he ate and followed when the woman motioned for him to do so. This is Fu. The woman seemed to take more interest of the girl on his back than Naruto himself which he was a little disgruntled about but soon she went back to her normal air of apathy. They walked for some time through stone hallways cut from the mountain and impressive bridges spanning the peaks, always heading in the direction of the blue dome-like structure around the largest mountain. Along the way the woman kept throwing them both curious glances but hid them well, afterwards he would look at nothing in particular and just shake her head as if in disbelief. Naruto had also begun to feel strange, he could feel the energy signatures of Kumo's Jinchuriki nearby but like in Taki he had no way of narrowing it down without first getting some information. So what's it like being a kunoiki for Kumo? He asked it innocently enough but the woman rounded on him suddenly. Stop asking question, why do you even care? Once you're gone you'll probably never see me again and if you do it will probably be alongside those bigots the rakage calls villages. The woman turned back around, obviously in a huff while Naruto walked after her, now confused. What do you mean about the villages? The woman sneered slightly, more out of irritation that condescension. Like you would know anything about it. Naruto's eyes narrowed. Try me, I've had my share of problems with ignorant villages. The woman just scoffed and kept walking. Please, I bet you had a few bullies when you were younger and felt your childhood was terrible. Naruto's eyes narrowed again dangerously and he was beginning to dislike this woman for the way she arrogantly put her problems above others. Naruto wasn't shallow enough to believe he had the worst childhood out of anybody in the world but this woman didn't even care to ask. I would hardly call mobs of townspeople armed with weapons all out for my blood a few bullies. You've obviously had some hardship in your life but that gives you no right to belittle mine or Fu's past. We both had to live through being punished for something we both didn't understand and had no control over. The woman seemed to hesitate at those words, her annoyed sneer turning into a frown as she looked at both of them closer, finally noticing the kanji engraved on Naruto's forehead. Wait, are you a Jinchuriki? Yeah I am. I had hoped to keep that a secret so me and Fu could at least have some peace while we're here but now it looks like I'm going to have to find somewhere else after speaking to the rakage. The woman just seemed visibly shocked, her eyes latched onto the girl wrapped almost protectively around Naruto's back. Yeah, Fu is too. He answered her unspoken question as she looked at them both before narrowing her own eyes. What is this, some cruel joke the villagers are pulling? Who put you up to this? Did B put you up to this as a joke because if he did I'm going to kill him. It's not funny. Naruto just stared at her slightly disbelieving in. What are you talking about? The woman just walked over and grabbed his shirt rather harshly. I don't believe you, prove it. Naruto pulled her hand off his shirt despite her unnatural strength and backed off a little. I can't, flaring QB's chakra would bring a lot of unwanted attention and Fu can't even access hers. He cursed, not wanting to have revealed which biju he carried, then again his headband was a dead giveaway. The woman looked a little awed, she had suspected from the kanji on the forehead protector but he had just confirmed it. It wasn't every day you got to meet the container for the most powerful entity in the elemental nations. I need to take you to see the rakage immediately. Naruto just looked at her strangely while rubbing the back of his head, a gesture Fu always found amusing because she knew it meant he was embarrassed. Um. Aren't we going there anyway? 
The woman just looked at him blankly for a moment before scowling and turning to go, just hiding the smallest of blushes as they quickened their pace through the village. Yugi Toni. It was barely a whisper, even Naruto didn't quite catch it with his impressive hearing. What was that? The woman didn't turn and just carried on walking in the direction of the domed building. My name is Yugi Toni. Naruto grinned broadly but that was missed as Yugito hurried on through stone passageways and across tremendous bridges. They kept winding through the village until finally they entered the rakage tower and the difference was noticeable. Outside it was cold and very windy, in the glass casing it was actually rather pleasant, warm but not enough to make somebody sweat. Yugito continued to lead the two of them as they climbed higher and higher into the building. Naruto just kept gazing out into the village, his breath taken away by the sight from this altitude. The journey came to an end outside a rather plain looking door that clearly had, rakage, inscribed in the wood. A kindly looking and very attractive woman with short silver hair and dark skin nodded at them to enter and Yugito did so without another word. Naruto could honestly say that the sight inside was almost as awe-inspiring as the view of the mountains. Sat behind a comparatively small desk sat the largest and most muscled man Naruto had ever seen in his life. Just the sight of him exuded power and respect without him having to twitch a single one of his enormous muscles. His platinum blonde hair was done back in thick dreadlocks which flicked outwards at his neck and had a matching goatee and moustache. The man wasn't wearing a shirt and the desk hid his equally impressive legs so all Naruto could see of his clothing were the two golden braces around his wrists. So you're the messenger from the Kazekage? Naruto nodded. Annoyed at being called just a messenger but he didn't want to say anything in front of this behemoth of a man. He politely nodded and quickly reproduced the scroll he had shown to the gate guards, handing it over. He noticed that the man's hands dwarfed his own and had to keep reminding himself he was only 14 of else he might have felt inadequate. The man looked over the scroll with a practiced eye, his brow quirking every so often as the only indication he was reading at all. This is interesting, I will have to give this some thought but many of your Kazekage's requests are very reasonable. It is impressive for such a young man. Naruto smiled a bit at the praise his friend was getting, not really caring if it might be mistaken for patriotism, he knew where his loyalties lay. I will have my reply ready in a few days for you to return to sooner with. Here came the part that Naruto suddenly became very nervous with. Despite having known four different cages the man in front of him still cast an intimidating shadow. I'm sorry Rakage sama I will be unable to return with the reply. The man looked questioning but thankfully there was no suspicion in his eyes. And why is that? You are a messenger aren't you? The bulky man looked Naruto over once, including the young girl who was still clinging to his back. Actually no, I am just a close friend with the Kazekage and was on my way here anyway so he thought the message would be safe with me. The Rakage raised his large brow but nodded, accepting the answer. And why, might I ask, were you on your way here then? Naruto stood a little straighter subconsciously from the natural authority in the man's voice. I was instructed by Gar the Kazekage to go on a two-year training trip to better prepare myself for future threats. Again the massive man nodded even though it was obvious he was now in some thought or another. And why would you come to Kumo when Kanoa are not only closer but currently allies with Sunagakur? Naruto held back his smirk, now rather thankful for the list of reasons Gara had rattled off. There are rumors that the two Jinchuriki that currently reside in Kumo have somehow gotten perfect control over their biju. The rakage nodded very slowly, now extremely wary as he noticed Yugito tense slightly from her position by the door. I have come to request similar training, or at least guidance from one of them to better control my own. The man in front of him didn't even look phased by Naruto's sudden revelation. And you contain the QB rakage sama. That time the man did show some surprise, the last he heard the QB was under the control of Kanoa, not sooner. Not only did this mean that the land of fire was lying but they were substantially weaker thanks to that loss. And what are your other reasons for coming here? Naruto had to physically prevent himself from breaking out into a sweat, the man was a fearsome interrogator despite the seeming innocence of his questions. I have a lightning affinity that until now has gone untrained. The Kazekage and I thought it was wise to fix that in preparation for my eventual conflict with Akatsuki. Everybody in the room visibly tensed at the mention of the organization's name, all of them knew of it and the dangers it posed to the Jinchuriki. I should also probably note that Fu here, he motioned in an obvious way to the slightly frightened girl on his back, is also a Jinchuriki, container of the Nanabi. 
If the rakage didn't look all that surprised before he certainly did now. Not only did one Jinchuriki just walk into his village, but two and both were relatively young. If he was his father the two would probably have been already restrained and examined for ways to extract the creatures inside of them into more acceptable hosts. As it was the rakage already knew that it required an Uzumaki to house the QB, nobody else would have the sheer chakra reserves at the required age of sealing. The girl was a different matter but she seemed to be under the protection of the blonde and the wrath of the QB was something I had no intention of bringing down on his village. I agree that it would more than likely be in everybody's best interests if you two gained control over your biju. Naruto looked a little surprised that the man had included Fu in that statement but he didn't show it. In honesty he hadn't really thought about Fu using her abilities, the other chakra couldn't get through yet so she was safe. However I cannot ask the two Jinchuriki of this village to give up the time to train two outsiders. If they agree then I have no qualms whatsoever. Naruto smiled and would have shaken the man's hand if he didn't fear he might not get it back afterwards. The man just nodded to Naruto's right and he turned only to see Yugito looking at him strangely. She seemed to be eyeing him up and it made him rather uncomfortable the way her eyes roamed over his body. It wasn't anything romantic or lustful, more like a predator eyeing up its prey to see its worth as a kill. B will be fine with it I'm sure, if the kid really needs it that badly I'll help out where I can. The rakage nodded his agreement as Naruto just stood blankly between them before turning back to Yugito. Wait, you're one of the Jinchuriki. The woman nodded rather grimly and Naruto suddenly felt bad about the way he had spoken to him earlier. I'm sore. Save it, you didn't know. Besides it was also foolish of me to assume my problems were worse than your own. Naruto nodded equally solemnly, out of the three of them Fu still probably had the worst of it. This woman looked like a capable and worthwhile Junin so at some point she either found the approval she was looking for or life cut her a break like it had for Naruto. Come on, we better go find B and tell him about it. He'll probably be alright training you but with that man sometimes even I can't tell. Naruto nodded again, following Yugito out of the room while the rakage took it all it with a curious eye, wondering what to make of this situation. Naruto was once again led through winding passageways but this time deeper into the mountains, further from the entrance to the village. After a while the cramped stone hallway seemed rather oppressive and seemed to bear down on him with all the weight of the mountain. To say it was intimidating would have been doing it an injustice, he wondered what kind of person regularly walked down these hallways. They emerged into a large plateau that overlooked yet more mountains around the back of the village. In the center of it stood a man Naruto could almost compare to the rakage in size and sheer intimidation. Like the rakage his hair was a platinum blonde bordering on white that was pulled into flatter dreads that better matched his clean cut beard. He wore a standard white armor vest but nothing underneath which showed off the tattoo for, iron, inscribed on his shoulder. He also had two blue bull horns tattooed on his left check below his sunglasses. He had an assortment of swords crisscrossing his back and Naruto wondered what each of their uses were considering there were seven and he couldn't use them all. He had a white bandana around his neck and a brown belt around his waist that supported his normal navy pants, also crisscrossed by white belt-like strips of cloth. To complete the look he had a matching set of white braces and greaves to make him look, in a word, fearsome. Hey B, you'll never guess what washed up in Kumo. Naruto was rather surprised at the relaxed and friendly way Yugito addressed the man compared with the much colder way she spoke to him. The large man, identified as, B, saw them and walked over with his features set in an impassive, unemotional look. Yo little miss too, what can I do for you? Naruto watched him for a moment as the plateau went eerily quiet. Did he just rap? This is Naruto and Fu. B looked at him, his eyes hidden by his sunglasses but still obviously looking him over as everybody seemed to be doing. Well look at the new Jinchuriki additions to Kumo, Miss 7 Fu and Mr. 9 Naruto. Everybody looked at the man with astonishment, he had instantly known they were both Jinchuriki, but not only that, he knew which biju they held. Don't look all shocked or Hachibi's pride will get mocked. Naruto sighed in relief, so this was the container for the eight tails, maybe he had some kind of ability to sense other biju. Yes, while not the most level-headed out of us, Kyuki certainly was a perceptive little octopus. Naruto looked inwardly strangely at Kyuubi. Don't you mean octopus? He just heard chuckling from his head. You'll see, maybe. Naruto just huffed in annoyance. Kyuubi could really get to him sometimes when she held back information. 
he still hadn't fully forgiven her for hiding her name for so long. How did you know which Biju we had? Or that we were Jinchuriki at all? B looked at him seriously, as if he was considering the question completely. He walked over and placed one of his large fingers against Naruto's forehead protector. It wasn't all that hard to find, I just had to use my mind. They all heard a snort from Yugito but B ignored it. You made it easy with your forehead protector, for little seven I had to be an inspector. Suna has one, it were five and four, but that's a bore, you want to know more. Three and six belong to Kiri so here's my theory that little Fu isn't Satiri because I'm right and Nanabi is in sight. Ah oh, yeah. He used hand gestures to punctuate his rhymes and Naruto didn't quite believe what he had just seen. Everybody just stared at the man for a few seconds, not even crickets could be heard chirping in the background it was so quiet. He looked up in pride with his arms crossed and while Naruto was rather impressed that he had managed to work all that out so quickly he was still incredibly weirded out. Why are you talking like that? Over to his side Yugito just face palmed and muttered something obscene under her breath. Very suddenly Naruto found himself enveloped in B's muscled arm as he wrapped both him and Fu in a large semi-hug. Let me tell ya Naruto, raps the music of Ma, soul so be very clear when I say that for me there ain't any other way. Naruto managed to work out of the man hug quickly and went back to staring at the large man in front of him. He didn't want to make a bad impression on the man because it was his decision whether or not he would receive training. Well nice ta meet you B, I'm Naruto Uzumaki, this here is my little sister Fu and we came here to get training from you. Everybody on the plateau just stood slack-jawed at Naruto's back, except for Fu who giggled a little at his on-the-spot rap. Yugito's eyes just stared at him disbelieving while they flickered back and forth between him and B who was equally shocked. In a flash of lighting Naruto felt his bones being shattered as he was enveloped in an even more deadly man-hug. Fu didn't fare much better being on his back at the time. Lil, Nine understands me, this is how it should be for Jinchuriki. Naruto didn't exactly appreciate being called little but he couldn't complain right now because he didn't have full use of his lungs. When he started to see images of his life flashing before his eyes be finally let go, letting both him and Fu fall to the ground in a heap. What about you little Fu, got any sick rhymes to spew? Yugito's eyes nearly shot out of their sockets and she quickly ran over and grabbed Fu's hands. No way, I'm not letting you corrupt this one. With that she pulled Fu onto her back much like Naruto had done and ran away. Naruto looked frightened and made a move to go after her but B put a reassuring hand on his shoulder, the entire hand engulfing his shoulder. Don't worry about little Miss Seven, with Yugi Toshi gonna be in heaven. Naruto wasn't entirely sure what that mean but B didn't give him the time as he swung him around to face him. So you come to the killer B for training. He smiled almost wickedly, for you, draining, for me, entertaining. Naruto suddenly got a sinking feeling growing at the pit of his stomach as he looked up at the Hachibi Jinchuriki. Naruto practically had to drag himself through the threshold of the house, for the first training session he would be having with B of many he hadn't held back in the slightest. B had told him that the first step to controlling the Biju was to control his own body, or at least rhymes to that effect. To that effect he had been doing physical exercises until his muscles screamed at him to stop and then he was forced to carry on anyway. That was interspersed with, light, spars with the man himself, spars that Naruto had been beaten in repeatedly. He had even pulled out the Fuijin no Iki at one point, much to B's surprise, but still hadn't been able to win. B's honed and conditioned reflexes combined with his training and his own biju allowed him to dodge most of Naruto's attacks, and all of that was before he pulled out the swords. Naruto had at first thought it was some kind of joke when B entered his seven sword stance but like many people who had faced him before Naruto quickly found that it was no laughing matter. It left absolutely no defenses open, the man was like a whirling maelstrom of death which was ironic considering who he was fighting. To a non-kenjutsu user like Naruto it was almost impenetrable, Naruto had been forced to use kunai sharpen with wind chakra just to survive the initial onslaught. That wasn't to say Naruto was considering Kenjutsu, he was more of an up-close and personal or ninjutsu user anyway. He stumbled in through the open door and nearly collapsed on the soft carpet right there and then. He only stayed standing because he realized Yugito and Fu were sitting on the couch in the room he had just entered. Both were looking at him with amused expressions as he just stood there, battered and bruised and barely conscious. Well, Yugito was amused, Fu immediately sped over to check on him. 
Onison. The mint-haired girl was already trying to check him over but he quickly put a placating hand on her shoulder. It's all right, Fu, I was just training. The girl was still upset. She didn't like seeing the man who had saved her looking like this. But you're hurt. Naruto chuckled a little, any more and he probably would have erupted into a fit of coughing. That just shows how hard I worked. Fu just furrowed her brow, eyes watering slightly. But why do you work so hard if it just hurts you? Yugito had gotten up to leave them alone at this point but she stayed by the door, watching with interest as Fu asked that. I have to get stronger Fu, there are lots of dangerous people in the world who want to hurt me and the people precious to me like you. I need to get stronger so I can protect you and them. By now Fu's eyes weren't just watering, tears were streaming down her face as she ran into Naruto's body, once again doing her best to hug him. Oh if, careful Fu, I'm still a little sore. The girl immediately backed away and blushed embarrassedly. Don't worry about it, just know that I'm doing this for a reason that's important to me. Fu nodded, now understanding somewhat, she may have just been a kid but she understood protecting what was precious to you, but before now she never had anything precious to protect. Then I want to train as well so you don't have to bear that burden by yourself. Naruto chuckled again, ruffling Fu's hair a bit which she didn't really appreciate much. I'd be happy to train you but if you want anything better you would have to ask Yugito or be sensei. He turned to look at said woman who was stood in the doorway who until now had been smirking to herself. Now she felt rather caught in the headlamps as Naruto looked at her expectantly and Fu just stared at her with her orange puppy dog eyes. There was no force on earth that could stand against those innocent, recently watery eyes. I guess I could show you some basic taijutsu but if you only have two years for the training trip, and I don't suspect you'll be spending it all here, in that case she won't be able to get very much of the biju training in. Naruto just nodded, he had already resolved to train Fu as much as he could. The better she could defend herself the better and she was a jinchuriki, she would be able to pick things up pretty quickly once she got in touch with her biju. Chomei seemed nice enough so he suspected she would want to help out as much as possible which was only plus. Alright, that's cool then. Yugito just chuckled and Naruto raised an eyebrow in her direction. It's nothing, you just sound like somebody I know, you'll probably see her around, all the guys do eventually. She said that with a knowing smirk that was more for herself than Naruto but he just nodded. Well all right then. With that Naruto promptly fainted to the floor with a heavy thump. Naruto flew across the rocky plateau but contrary to how that might have gone six months ago he managed to twist his body in the air and land on both feet in a solid three-point stance. Immediately he had to use his one grounded hand to flip himself up and forwards over his brutish attacker to avoid the knee that would have sure impacted with his chin otherwise. Once again he had barely moments to stay on the ground before he was forced to evasively dodge to one side, rolling along his shoulder to soften the impact. Currently he was stripped down to just his normal shinobi pants and sandals. The only other thing he was wearing was a sheen of sweat which glistened over his bare torso. They had been at this for hours, the intense physical exercise enough to even overcome the chill of the late winter air this high in the mountains. Finally he caught a break as he slid to the ground in an impressive split letting his attacker's fist sail over his head. He grabbed said extended limb before scissoring his legs together along the ground to capture his opponent's legs. Using the man's large body as leverage he flipped himself around to land firmly on the man's exposed back, mindful of the swords that were strapped there. He still had a grip on the man's arm and pulled it around sharply to hold him in a painful submission hold, one that would allow his teammates to tie him up in that scenario. He smirked but his slight overconfidence got the better of him as the man overpowered his hold with brute force alone and threw Naruto back. Once again he dropped down into a ready stance that would have allowed him to attack or defend but his sparring partner held up a hand. That's enough for today Naruto, I think it's about time we go. Yugito been teaching you some killer moves, it really been helping out yo groove. Naruto just smiled at the compliment, going over to where the gear was stashed and throwing his lightweight training shirt on. Alright B sensei, Fu and Yugito should be finishing up now, we can go swing by them. The large muscled man nodded his agreement, pulling on the rest of his own equipment. He also beamed a little, one of the man's favorite things about Naruto was the sensei title, it made him feel good to impart his knowledge. Much to his displeasure Naruto hadn't quite taken to rap as his first encounter would have him believe. However unlike most he didn't completely dismiss B for it either which he was appreciative of. 
They jogged out of their training ground towards another further down the mountain where the air was a bit thicker. It had taken Naruto a while to get used to the high altitude that training in Kumo required but once he had he found fighting lower down even easier. He was told it had something to do with oxygen and adjusted dependencies but he wasn't too bothered with the specifics as long as it worked. One of his favorite training grounds was the one at the very top of the second tallest mountain in Kumo. It was the most peaceful place Naruto had ever visited without any animals of people for ages in any direction. He was surrounded by the chilled air and the fluffy white clouds below him. Fu also seemed to like it when he took her up there one night. Naruto smiled as he thought of his surrogate sister. The two of them had really bonded in their time in Kumo and he couldn't wait to introduce her to Tayuya. That name brought him a small frown. It had been six months since he had left Sunagakur and he had yet to hear from Gara or his girlfriend. He understood that it might be difficult to locate him and that she was on a difficult and dangerous mission but he thought this was long enough. He sighed, knowing there was nothing he could do about it without going back to Suna himself which he wouldn't do. He had promised to return stronger and he didn't believe he was there yet. That wasn't to say his training wasn't effective. He trained with both B and Yugito, after she had warmed up to him of course. B would put him through his paces with physical exercise and training his rapidly growing lightning affinity. Yugito would help him with his overall flexibility and his taijutsu, he had managed to incorporate aspects of her very bendy style into his own. They shared the fact that their main style was on all fours a lot of the time due to their respective biju. Both of them would help him with his jinchuriki specific training, working with Kyuubi's chakra. He had now mastered the fourth tail, being able to call upon it without losing his mind. The power boost he got during that state was unimaginable, it still hurt like hell afterwards but now that his and Kyuubi's chakras were more in sync there was less damage. Fu had also begun her training in being a jinchuriki, taking her first meditative steps into her own mindscape not a week after arriving in Kumo. Chomai's chakra was now steadily flowing through her coils, widening them and vastly improving her already decent reserves for somebody with minimum training. That wasn't the only area she was trained in, Yugito had practically taken the girl under her wing. She was trained in every element of being a kunoiki, Yugito's taijutsu mixed with Naruto's ninjutsu and her all-around stamina made her effective. She was still inexperienced and a little rough around the edges but she was advancing quickly much to Naruto's satisfaction. He and B helped out where they could, offering tips from their own experiences handling a high-tailed biju but in the end it just seemed Yugito could do more for her. That wasn't the only way the two had bonded, before too long the girls were inseparable and not long after that Yugito had accepted Fu calling her Onizen. Naruto wasn't jealous though, he still got to spend as much time as he liked with his Imuoto and he enjoyed that time immensely. For as long as he could remember he had wanted a family. He had something like that with Gara, but to have it on this level was indescribable. Gara would always be his best friend and he could never look at Tayuya like that again so his relationship with Fu was truly unique. Hey guys, they had slid and jumped down the mountain to the lower training grounds where they found an equally sweaty Fu and Yugito sitting on a boulder chatting. With a blush Naruto couldn't help but notice the way the sweat shimmered on Yugito's skin, catching the sun. He loved Tayuya with all his heart but he was still a 15-year-old boy and Yugito was a very attractive 19 years old. He hid his blush as he walked over, waving back to Fu who had spotted him immediately. Hey Onisen, you missed Yugito sensei do something awesome. Naruto just smiled, when training Fu always called her mentor and surrogate sister sensei, it stopped her associating the harsh training she was put through with her loving sister. Oh really? What did I miss? He jumped onto the large boulder they were sitting and plopped down next to them, throwing an arm around Fu's shoulders which she snuggled into. She changed into Matatabi, like full on and everything. Naruto just looked around his gushing sister to a now embarrassed Yugito, a little bit of awe in his eyes. Fu are you sure this wasn't one of Yugito's genjutsus? Remember that one that made you believe you lived on a pirate ship where men could stretch their limbs like rubber? Fu just sighed exasperatedly. Naruto would never give that up after she came home excited about it after one training session. No, I'm serious. She turned to Yugito in a huff. Come on Yugito sensei, show Naruto that awesome flaming cat form. Said woman just chuckled to herself. Fu is right Naruto, I am able to transform into my biju. It's one of the many perks of being in full control. 
Naruto's eyes widened at that, honestly he had really thought it was a prank of some kind, but that she could actually transform into the Nibi itself was impressive. Wow, okay that's cool. I'd love to see that. Yugito just shook her head while smirking, gaining Naruto's narrowed eyes. I can't do it that often. It takes a lot out of me and Matatabi. Naruto just nodded slowly, a little disappointed before he spun on the boulder to ask if Bi could do it but he had already taken the opportunity to vanish. Hey Kurama, could we do that someday? He felt the old vixen shake her head sadly and Naruto frowned. Why not? You forget Naruto, half of my chakra is sealed away in the stomach of the Shinigami. Even if you master all of the chakra inside your body that is still only one half of my original power. Without my yin chakra we could never transform back into myself completely. If you really wanted to, when you reach that level of control you could use my chakra to simply henge into me if you wanted, I guess I might find that flattering. Naruto shared a laugh with his tenant, it was a disappointing revelation but it did get him thinking. What's it like to be separated from half of your chakra? He felt the shudder from inside of him, it must have been an unpleasant experience to make a creature like the QB act in such a way. Not pleasant kit, the damn Shinigami literally dragged it out of my body and it felt like I had forever lost a source of heat in my own body. Still though, even without my yin I am more powerful than any of my siblings. That also made Naruto think, Kyuubi was an incredibly powerful entity, even now, she must have been positively immense before the ceiling. It must be very, unbalancing. He felt her sigh and just decided to drop the conversation that was obviously causing the Biju displeasure. Sorry. Just curious, he felt her nod before she went quiet, probably slinking off to a corner of his mindscape. A uh, Onisen. His eyes came back into focus to see Fu's caramel hand waving in front of his face and he blushed from being caught dazzling. Sorry, just talking to QB. He shook his head and looked at Fu and Yugito again with a smile. Anyway I would like to see that sometime Yugito, it would be cool. The girl nodded with a small smile, reminding Naruto why it was worth it to befriend the woman. Anyway Fu, eventually you should be able to transform into Chomei by yourself, how cool would that be? The mint-haired girl's eyes seemed to sparkle, not having thought of that. Yugito quickly nipped it in the bud though, not wanting to get the girl's hopes up so soon. That won't be for a long time Fu. I had to spend years refining my control over Matatabi's chakra and your Biju has more tails so in theory it should be even more difficult. Naruto is only able to do what he does because of the way his seal is designed so unless you get a master Fuinjutsu user to alter your seal it's going to be long and hard training ahead of you. Fu pouted a little, drawing out her puppy dog eyes without even realizing it and turning to Naruto. Onisen, you know seals right. Could you help me? Naruto almost wanted to say yes under such a powerful attack from her watery orange eyes but he managed a chuckle. I'm a bit too humble to call myself a Fuinjutsu master. Dot dot quote. He looked away in thought, dot but I have been rather neglecting the field and it has always interested me. Hell, after the Fujin no Iki showed me what I could do with it I'm almost surprised I didn't lock myself away for another year to study it. He looked back at Fu. I'm going to train myself in sealing more, maybe then I could help you. Fu beamed brightly, all hint of her puppy dog eyes gone as she enveloped her brother in a hug. After all, how hard could it be to find a Fuinjutsu master to train me? It had been three months since Naruto had thought that fateful line and he cursed himself every day for it. It turned out that Fuinjutsu might as well have been a dying art, there was literally no masters of it left except for Jiraiya of the Sanin. Of course all the ones he knew who were proficient on the art lived in Suna, no help there then. He made do with the scrolls he found in Kumo's library which were surprisingly effective. He read as much as he could when he could, absorbing everything with ease. He had once been told he had an almost unnatural knack for the subject, surprising and surpassing most that tried to teach him. He just simply understood it, how the various arrays worked, how they fit together and what could or couldn't be tweaked. In fact recently, fiddling with already existing seals was a pastime, something he did if he had a spare moment. Already he had managed to increase the power and range of the standard exploding tags Kumo used with only a minor modification. This action elicited a response from the rakage, namely to allow him access to many of the older and more valuable ceiling scrolls he had in his personal library. This was in exchange for any breakthroughs Naruto made during his stay in Kumo which he was happy to agree to if it gave him more to study and learn. 
Fu had once told him it was like he was addicted to the art and Naruto had a hard time arguing with the girl. The feeling he got when he finally unlocked the mysteries of a complex array, or designed one for himself were nearly euphoric. He also had an ulterior motive to his work, while he enjoyed it for himself he also knew that with the more he learned the better equipped he would be to finally help Tyria rid herself of the cursed seal. It was one of the many goals that kept driving him forward in finding more and more information. Before he knew it he was standing over Fu's prone body with her on her stomach on the bed. Her shirt was raised up allowing him to see the intricate and spiraling seal that adorned her right shoulder blade. He looked it over with a now trained eye, noticing the complex and subtle layering within the seal itself that allowed for the chakra absorption and suppression of the nanobi. He had been doing this a lot for the last week and the stack of notes building up on the small desk next to him was proof of that. He had promised Fu that he would adjust her seal to allow more chakra flow and that was exactly what he planned to do. He was just lucky that this wasn't the type of seal that needed a key or he wouldn't have been able to do anything. As it was he was now in the process of tracing out complicated kanji in specific orders around the so often he would have a trail of them emerging from the rings he created to wind further around her body. Luckily he planned it so he wouldn't have to draw anywhere indecent, he wasn't Jiraiya after all and Fu was his little sister, even if not in blood. It took almost half an hour with Fu staying perfectly still and him drawing with his tickling ink brush before he could stand back, a satisfied grin on his features. He looked around to Yugito and B who actually looked rather bored having to wait this long. They were there in case something went wrong, Naruto found it a little insulting that they didn't trust his skills but he was young so he understood their position. He took a deep breath to alert them that he was ready before moving back over to where Fu was waiting a bit more patiently. Alright Imuoto, I'm ready to do this. If it all goes how I want it to this should increase the rate Nanabi can input her chakra into your system. Not by too much of course, I wouldn't want to hurt you. Even so I figure that isn't going to be the most pleasant of experiences but I have to ask that you try and keep as still as possible while the seal is still completing itself. Fu nodded, biting her lip out of worry, she trusted her brother but he had told her repeatedly that forcefully expanding one's chakra coils would not be pleasant. With one last check to make sure absolutely everything was perfect Naruto pulled in a deep breath and channeled chakra to his finger. It took nearly all his chakra control just to manage this but a small blue flame appeared around his digit which he quickly used to inscribe over Fu seal. He added some parts that would be needed as well as removing a few others that weren't critical to its integrity. Finally he gave a small flick of his wrist to ever so slightly decrease the size of the swirl at the center of the seal. With a burst of chakra from his entire palm all the kanji he had drawn began to writhe over Fu's body. They snaked inwards in a large circle before they combined into intricate arrays that B and Yugito couldn't follow. They were quickly absorbed into the original seal before Fu let out a gasp of pain as she felt fire enter her blood and travel through her whole body. Naruto put a firm hand on her shoulder, trying to ease her tension as much as he could. A soft yellow glow began to appear over Fu's body and in the corner of the room Yugito and B looked worried, fearing that the Nanabi might have been released. Naruto just narrowed his eyes, still holding firmly to Fu's shoulder as the last of the extra seals disappeared under the original and Fu thankfully slumped back into the bed, yellow glow gone. Naruto smiled kindly down at her, she would probably be unconscious for a few hours but when she woke up she would feel the effects of the altered seal. He also smiled to himself, this was his first step as a Fuinjutsu user and he couldn't be happier about it. Naruto slid down the banister of the staircase in the Rakage Mansion, followed shortly after by Fu. They both laughed as they slid down the polished wood, ending in small but graceful flips from the two of them. Naruto managed to land in front of a squad that was just now getting back from a mission and stared at him and the mint-haired girl behind him oddly. He just smiled back at them, already knowing who they were thanks to introductions from Yugito. Hey Karui, Simui, Omoi, you just get back. The three older shinobi and kunoiki nodded, Karui with a smile, Omoi with his usual bored look and Samui with her indifferent expression. Despite how she acted around people Naruto knew Samui was a good person at heart, she cared for her teammates and their sensei even though it wasn't obvious from the way she acted. Hey Naruto, Fu, what were you talking to Reikage sama about? Naruto just smirked at Karui, she had become a great friend for him, not to mention an excellent sparring partner. She wasn't as skilled with Kenjutsu as B was so it was good to hone his skills against her making the fights with B that little bit easier. 
Sometimes he would take on Omoi, Simwi, and her all at once to get him to somewhat emulate B's multiple sword fighting style. Not a lot, just returning a scroll I borrowed, Karui just nodded in understanding. Naruto's passion for all things Fuinjutsu was legendary by now, some people actually coming to him with jobs of the nature. He was about to continue when all five of them heard an incredibly high-pitched squawk coming from the entrance to the rakage tower. They turned in time to see a rather large falcon burst through the doors quite spectacularly and start to circle around the ceiling. Um, shouldn't that be at the bird tower? The three Kumo Shinobi just nodded dumbly staring at the strange sight of the bird circling indoors. Suddenly its lively eyes caught Naruto's body and in a flash its head swiveled and its wings tilted. Much to Naruto's surprise the bird suddenly came crashing down on him and would have bowled him over without B's endurance training. Instead he managed to catch the large falcon with one hand around its neck and the other around its feet. He immediately noticed the scroll attached to the bird's back and quickly slid it out of the little carrier case it came in. Then to everybody's surprise the bird just up and burst into a small cloud of smoke. After everybody was done coughing and swatting the annoying white cloud away Naruto stared dumbly at the roll of paper in his hand. Ha! Huh. Must have been a summon. Fu was now behind him on her tippy toes trying to peek over his shoulder at the scroll. She had grown in the ten months they had been in Kumo but then again, so had Naruto. What's it say? Naruto turned the strange scroll over in his hand, surprisingly finding, for shithead, written on the side. His face lit up in a gleaming smile as he looked over the scroll again as Team Simui came over to look at it. Who's it for? Naruto kept his grin on his face. It's for me. Simui just seemed confused as she read the message on the side, especially after seeing Naruto's grin. Then why does it say for shithead? Naruto just grinned even wider. It's from my girlfriend. Again he got some very strange looks from the three cloud shinobi. Fu was more understanding as Naruto had told her a lot about Tayuya. It was great seeing you guys, I'll catch you around but I'm gonna head home and check out the scroll. Team Simui just shared a collective shrug and nod before brushing past him to climb the stairs he had moments ago slid down. Naruto paid them no mind after that, he simply pulled Fu onto his shoulders like he used to do and sped off. Hey, I'm not a little kid anymore, you don't have to carry me. Naruto just smirked as he carried on running. Oh, and who was it that said it's part of a brother's job to be a taxi service? Anyway I know you love it. Fu quietened down, he was right, she really did love it when he would do this for her. She was a shinobi in training now so she could run quickly but that was nothing compared to Naruto, he was impossibly fast and she liked the wind rushing past her at these high speeds. She noticed he was climbing higher instead of moving towards the house and she smirked, he must have really wanted to get home quickly. When they reached a point where they could both make out Yugito's house far below them on the mountain Naruto threw his special kunai with deadly accuracy. It struck the side of the house without a sound, Naruto having already completed his silencing seal and adding them to his weapons. A brief tingling across Fu's skin later and they were outside the house, Naruto already removing the kunai form the wall. You know Onizen hates it when you do that, it leaves marks in the walls. Naruto just shrugged with Fu still on his back. I'll buy her some sashimi later and she'll forget all about it. The girl was addicted to the stuff, it wasn't even funny. Naruto thought he could pack away the food but Yugito was on another level to him entirely. She said it was because he had yet to find his soulmate of foods but he just found her a little weird whenever she spoke like that. Everybody just figured it was because of the cat-like influences she got from Matatabi, and those weren't even the only thing she got. Naruto walked into the house with a smile on his face, B had been taking it fairly easy today so he wasn't nearly as worn out as usual. He stepped across the threshold, immediately looking for Fu and Yugito. He was glad the two were getting along even if he and Yugito hadn't quite found common ground after their first day. The woman was just cold to him, she trusted Fu because she was young and innocent while it wasn't nearly as easy to let Naruto in. He wasn't too worried, she would come around eventually. Naruto had once been told that he just had a natural way of bringing people around, of making friends out of enemies. He checked the ground floor and couldn't see them, he was a bit sad as he thought he could use his extra energy to do something with Fu. He shrugged it off and decided to go find a Fuinjutsu scroll to curl up with and study. He was suddenly put on alert as he heard strange sounds from upstairs, he rushed up in case it was attackers or burglars. 
As he approached he once again noticed the strangeness of the sounds, it was like a growling or a moan that sounded bestial but yet was definitely human. The sounds came from Yugito's bedroom and, worrying that she was in danger, he burst through the wooden door. The sight that met his eyes would not have crossed his mind, nor would it leave it, in years. Yugito was spread out on her bed, clutching her sheets as her body arched up and down in supposed agony. However the first thing Naruto noticed was the fact that the woman was wearing nothing but her headband. Naruto's eyes nearly shot out of their sockets as he immediately swiveled on his foot, hands already firmly clasped over his eyes. Sorry Yugito, I heard noises and there were shouts and I'm sorry. He tried to stumble out of the room but he heard the pained panting behind him stop and he could almost feel Yugito's eyes boring into his skull. Naruto. Naruto's eyes opened even further behind his hands as he continued to fumble his way out of the room. Naruto wait. He froze mid-step, his mind overloading from that simple statement as he failed to understand what was going on. From what he knew of women they didn't like guys walking in on them like this, that meant she was stopping him so she could punish him. Yugito, I'm sore, he was cut off mid-sentence as he felt Yugito's body press up against his back, her very warm, sweaty and naked body. A finger was pressed up against his lips to silence him, not that he could even make a sound as his brain nearly exploded from the contact. Naruto, I need you. Her voice was a mix between a whisper and a moan as she turned him around with her hands and slowly pried his hand away from his face. His eyes were clenched firmly shut, still not knowing what was going on and whether or not it was a test. He just hoped she wasn't like Anko, teasing him only so that she could punish and humiliate him later. Yugito what is? Her finger was once again placed sensually against his lips to silence him as she leaned her whole body against him. Naruto gulped loudly as two soft yet firm mounds pressed up against his chest as he idly noticed his pants were becoming tighter. What is it Naruto? Don't you like me? He just stuttered out something unintelligible, his eyes still closed out of confusion and fear. Then why won't you look at me? He just shook his head firmly and he could almost imagine her cute yet convincing pout, filled with sexual energy. I just need you for a little while Naruto, that's all. Naruto's eye twitched dangerously behind his closed eyelids as he wondered just how many guys would kill to be in this situation with a beautiful woman like Yugito. She took his hand and he unintentionally opened his eyes a crack to see what she was doing only to regret it instantly. At that moment she firmly took his hand and planted it right on her ample breast, using her own hands to knead it into the soft flesh. Naruto nearly fainted there and then but a sudden burst of adrenaline had him yank the hand out of her strong grasp, turn promptly and run out of her room. He ran straight out of the house, not stopping for anything or anybody until he reached his training ground where he collapsed to the ground, confusion overtaking him. Killer B had later explained to him that Matatabi had a certain effect on Yugito on specific days in the month. He compared it to a cat going into heat and Naruto had to agree with his analogy after witnessing it firsthand. Luckily that was exactly the moment that the ice broke between him and Yugito, the two of them becoming good, if not slight or awkward, friends not too soon after. Of course if Taiya ever found out he was certain to at least lose a limb so after a long and difficult internal debate of about two seconds he reasoned that it was perfectly natural to have a few secrets. He and Fu walked into the house, greeting Yugito warmly when they saw her cooking up some food in the kitchen. She was curious about the scroll in Naruto's hands but he simply explained it was from his girlfriend. The reaction he got was a little strange but he couldn't explain it. Yugito blushed a little before looking away almost guiltily. Naruto usually would have put more thought into it but he was too excited by the message from Tayuya. He laid the scroll down on the table and opened it up after cracking the fairly poor seal on its front. He smirked as he read the first words, Hey shithead. Well that was always a good start. That will be it for this video if you want more comment down below, like, subscribe. And see you guys later.